Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. We have found so much freedom and truth and the true gospel, the full gospel. Andrew makes it so easy to understand and to grasp. This constant revelation all the time it doesn't stop. It is amazing. It is amazing. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm going to start a series teaching on the faith of God. And I know many of you think, oh no, another teaching on faith. <laughs> Uh, this is different. This is talking about the faith of God instead of putting faith in God. And one of the points that I'm going to be making, I'll just go ahead and say this, is some of you may think this is so radical that you'll just immediately reject the teaching without giving me a chance to explain. But it's not that we put faith in God. God gives us His supernatural faith. And every person who has been born again has the same quantity and quality of faith that Jesus has because it is the faith of God that you have. So the benefit of all of this is knowing that your faith is not inadequate. It's not uh, incomplete. It's not something that, you know, uh, a lot of people think that God passed out different measures of faith. I'm going to get into this in more detail later in this week. But some people think that, you know, it's like God gives everybody a measure of faith and then somebody jiggled his arm as he was giving you some and he spilt it and you just barely got any. And so really most people understand that faith is powerful. The scripture says without faith, it's impossible to please him. Hebrews 11, 6, all things are possible to him that believes. Our faith is what moves mountains. Uh, Mark chapter 11 and just so many things. Most people understand that faith is powerful and they may look at somebody like me or they go to a meeting and they see someone who has a testimony about great miracles that are happening and they say, well, that's great, but they just don't have any. And they spend most of their time begging God to increase their faith, to give them more faith. One of the things that this teaching will do, if you embrace it and understand what I'm saying, is it will show you that you don't have a faith problem. What you've got is a knowledge problem. And I'm going to be explaining that in a lot more detail. But for me, this is the very first thing, the very first teaching that ever came out of my understanding of what I call spirit, soul, and body, who you are in Christ. And this is the thing that just changed my life and opened up everything in the Word of God to me. And the very first application of that was that I just felt like, oh God, I know you're all powerful. I know that faith works, but I just don't have any. And what do I have to do to get more faith? And I was constantly begging God. One of the things that happened was I realized I had the God kind of faith, a supernatural faith given to me at salvation. I did not have a faith problem. What I had was a knowledge problem. I didn't know how faith worked. And one of the things I'll be teaching in this is faith works by laws. There are laws that govern faith, just as there are laws that govern electricity. And when I saw this, it totally changed my focus. Instead of begging God and just waiting on God to somehow or another zap me with this supernatural faith that all of a sudden I had no more doubt and unbelief and I just was operating in faith, I began to recognize I had faith. It was just a matter of drawing it out, learning how to use what God had already given me. My confidence level went through the roof. And even though there was still a lot of work ahead of me to understand and to renew my mind and learn these things, it gave me a hope that I knew I had what I needed. I just didn't know how to use it. I don't know if that communicates to you or not, but it really ministered to me. So this is the very first application after I saw who I was in Christ and I began to start applying it, it was to understand I had the faith of Jesus, not faith in Jesus. Now, I don't think it's totally wrong to say that you put faith in Jesus, but the Scripture says that we have the faith of Christ in us, and I'm going to be dealing with that in a lot more detail. Last week, I sat down and took some time off, and I wrote a little booklet entitled The Faith of God. 
NOW, I TALK ABOUT THIS AND I MENTION IT IN A NUMBER OF THE TEACHINGS THAT I HAVE. AND AS A MATTER OF FACT, WE'RE GOING TO BE OFFERING A COMPLIMENTARY TEACHING THAT GOES ALONG WITH THIS AS A PACKAGE DEAL ENTITLED, YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT. AND THIS IS THE SAME PRINCIPLE, BUT IT'S NOT JUST APPLIED TO FAITH. IT'S APPLIED TO HEALING. IT'S APPLIED TO INTERCESSION. IT'S APPLIED TO EVERYTHING. SO THIS IS A BROAD APPLICATION OF THIS TRUTH. AND THIS IS SPECIFICALLY TALKING ABOUT THE FAITH OF GOD. THIS IS JUST A LITTLE, I I DON'T KNOW, PROBABLY 20-PAGE BOOKLET that, THAT I WROTE LAST WEEK THAT IS A BRIEF SUMMARY OF THIS. AND THEN WE WILL HAVE THE ENTIRE TEACHING THAT IS TAKEN FROM THESE PROGRAMS THAT WE'LL BE PUTTING OUT ON CD OR DVD. AND ANYWAY, WE'LL MAKE AN OFFER AT THE END OF ALL OF THIS, uh, AT THE END OF OUR PROGRAM. SO LET ME JUST SAY THAT, YOU KNOW, THIS IS A CONCEPT THAT MOST CHRISTIANS HAVE, THAT FAITH IS POWERFUL, FAITH WORKS, FAITH CAN MOVE A MOUNTAIN. THE PROBLEM IS I JUST DON'T HAVE ANY OF IT, OR I HAVE VERY LITTLE OF IT, OR MY FAITH IS SO IMMATURE THAT IT JUST DOESN'T WORK. AND SO WE'RE CONSTANTLY RUNNING TO OTHER PEOPLE uh, THINKING THAT, YOU KNOW, WE NEED THEM TO BELIEVE FOR US. YOU KNOW, THIS IS ONE OF THE THINGS. I LOVE PRAYING FOR PEOPLE. I'VE PRAYED FOR WHO KNOWS. I WOULDN'T BE SURPRISED IF I HADN'T PRAYED FOR OVER A MILLION PEOPLE. I'VE PRAYED FOR A LOT OF PEOPLE. AND I DON'T MIND PRAYING FOR PEOPLE, BUT IT BOTHERS ME THAT PEOPLE THINK I'M THE ONLY ONE THAT CAN RECEIVE FOR THEM. IT'S JUST, IT'S WRONG. IF YOU UNDERSTAND WHAT I'M GOING TO BE TEACHING IN THIS SERIES, YOU HAVE THE EXACT SAME FAITH THAT I HAVE, THE SAME FAITH THAT PAUL HAD, THE SAME FAITH THAT PETER HAD, THE SAME FAITH THAT JESUS HAD. YOU HAVE THE FAITH OF JESUS. YOU'VE GOT FAITH. NOW, THERE, YOU DO HAVE TO GROW IN YOUR UNDERSTANDING OF HOW IT OPERATES, AND SO THERE IS A PROCESS INVOLVED HERE, BUT THE WAY THAT MOST PEOPLE JUST BASICALLY ARE IGNORING, I BELIEVE IT'S THROUGH IGNORANCE, IGNORING WHAT THEY HAVE, IT JUST, IT BOTHERS ME TO SEE PEOPLE COME AND SAY, I'VE PRAYED, I'VE DONE EVERYTHING, NOTHING WORKS FOR ME, WOULD YOU PRAY? THAT REALLY BOTHERS ME. AND SO THIS IS WHAT GOD HAS ANOINTED ME TO DO, IS TO SHARE THESE TRUTHS. AND THIS IS ONE OF THE MOST FOUNDATIONAL THINGS THAT GOD EVER TAUGHT ME. I PROMISE YOU THIS IS GOING TO BE A DEAL CHANGER FOR YOU. LET ME START OVER HERE IN LUKE CHAPTER 17. AND I'M NOT GOING TO READ THE FIRST FOUR VERSES, BUT uh, JESUS WAS TELLING HIS DISCIPLES THAT THEY NEED TO FORGIVE. AND THEY SAID, HOW OFTEN? SEVEN TIMES? HE SAID, NOT 70 TIMES, 70 TIMES 7. (laughs) AND WHEN THEY HEARD THIS, THEY WERE SHOCKED. AND THEY SAID IN VERSE 5, THIS IS LUKE CHAPTER 17, VERSE 5, AND THE APOSTLES SAID UNTO THE LORD, INCREASE OUR FAITH. YOU KNOW, THIS IS A POINT THAT'S WORTH MAKING, THAT THEY SAW JESUS RAISE THE DEAD, THEY SAW JESUS OPEN BLIND EYES. THEY SAW JESUS CAST OUT DEVILS. THEY SAW JESUS WALK ON THE WATER. THEY SAW MIRACLE AFTER MIRACLE AFTER MIRACLE, AND THEY NEVER SAID INCREASE OUR FAITH. BUT WHEN HE TOLD THEM, YOU NEED TO FORGIVE SOMEBODY UP TO 490 TIMES IN ONE DAY, WHICH TECHNICALLY SPEAKING, I DON'T BELIEVE IT'S ON THE 491ST TIME YOU HAVE A RIGHT TO GET MAD AND NOT FORGIVE. HE WAS JUST SAYING THERE SHOULDN'T BE ANY LIMIT. IT'S LIMITLESS. YOU NEED TO ALWAYS WALK IN LOVE AND FORGIVENESS TOWARDS THOSE WHO'VE DONE SOMETHING WRONG TO YOU. WHEN THEY SAW WHAT HE TOLD THEM THERE, THEY SAID, INCREASE OUR FAITH. SO THIS IS ONE OF THE POINTS THAT, YOU KNOW, IT TAKES FAITH, NOT ONLY TO SEE THE DEAD RAISED OR BLIND EYES OPEN, IT TAKES FAITH TO WALK IN LOVE WITH OUR BROTHERS AND SISTERS. AND and NOT ONLY THE BELIEVERS, BUT THE UNBELIEVERS AND THE THINGS THAT ARE GOING TO HAPPEN. IT TAKES FAITH TO LIVE THE CHRISTIAN LIFE. YOU CAN'T DO IT IN YOUR OWN STRENGTH AND POWER. YOU HAVE TO APPROPRIATE GOD'S POWER, AND FAITH IS HOW WE DO THAT. SO THEY, WHEN when HE SAID, YOU'VE GOT TO FORGIVE 490 TIMES IN ONE DAY, THEY SAID, LORD, INCREASE OUR FAITH. THIS IS THE SAME QUESTION THAT MANY, MANY PEOPLE ARE ASKING TODAY. AND LOOK AT HIS ANSWER. HE GAVE A PARABLE HERE TO ANSWER THEIR QUESTION. SO IN LUKE CHAPTER 17, IN VERSE 6, IT SAYS, AND THE LORD SAID, IF YOU HAD FAITH, AS A GRAIN OF MUSTARD SEED, YOU MIGHT SAY UNTO THE SYCAMINE TREE, BE THOU PLUCKED UP BY THE ROOT, AND BE THOU PLANTED IN THE SEA, AND IT SHOULD OBEY YOU. NOW, HE GOES ON AND GIVES SOME MORE OF THIS PARABLE, BUT THERE'S BASICALLY TWO POINTS THAT HE WAS MAKING. THE FIRST ONE IS RIGHT HERE IN VERSE 6, AND BASICALLY WHAT HE IS SAYING IS, GUYS, YOU DON'T NEED MORE FAITH. USE WHAT YOU'VE GOT. 
A LITTLE TINY amount OF FAITH LIKE A MUSTARD SEED. I DON'T KNOW HOW MANY OF YOU HAVE EVER SEEN A MUSTARD SEED. I HAVE SOME OF THOSE AT MY HOUSE, AND I MEAN, THEY ARE TINY. IF I WAS HOLDING IT UP RIGHT HERE IN FRONT OF THE CAMERA AND YOU WERE LOOKING AT IT, YOU COULDN'T SEE IT. IT IS TINY. IT'S, it's SMALLER THAN THOSE um, SEEDS THAT THEY HAVE ON A BUN, YOU KNOW, WHEN YOU'RE EATING A HAMBURGER OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT, THE SESAME SEEDS. IT'S SMALLER THAN THAT. IT'S LITTLE TINY. AND THE POINT THAT HE'S MAKING IS, GUYS, YOU DON'T NEED MORE FAITH. USE WHAT YOU'VE GOT BECAUSE ONE LITTLE MUSTARD SEED AMOUNT OF FAITH IS ENOUGH FOR YOU TO TALK TO A TREE AND SAY, BE UPROOTED AND GO PLANT YOURSELF IN THE SEA. AND YOU DON'T HAVE TO TOUCH IT. YOU DON'T HAVE TO DO ANYTHING. THAT'S HOW POWERFUL FAITH IS. SO RIGHT HERE IN LUKE CHAPTER 17, HE TALKS ABOUT YOU CAN SPEAK TO A TREE AND COMMAND IT TO UPROOT AND BE CAST INTO A SEA. OR YOU CAN SPEAK TO A MOUNTAIN AND COMMAND IT TO MOVE. THAT'S THE POWER OF FAITH. AND IN LUKE 17, 6, IF IT'S ONLY A MUSTARD SEED AMOUNT OF FAITH, IF IT'S TINY, THAT'S ENOUGH TO DO ANYTHING. FAITH IS POWERFUL. FAITH IS POTENT. FAITH, YOU DON'T HAVE TO HAVE A LOT OF FAITH. AND I'VE GOT A TEACHING THAT TOWARDS THE END OF THIS, I'LL BE REFERRING TO SOME OF THESE THINGS AND EXPLAINING IT MORE, BUT LET ME JUST SAY THAT FAITH ISN'T THE PROBLEM. MOST PEOPLE DON'T KNOW HOW TO USE FAITH. FAITH IS GOVERNED BY LAWS, AND ALSO UNBELIEF WILL NEGATE FAITH. UNBELIEF IS AN OPPOSING FORCE. IT PULLS IN THE OPPOSITE DIRECTION OF FAITH. SO IF, if ALL YOU HAVE IS A MUSTARD SEED AMOUNT OF FAITH, WHICH EVERY ONE OF US THAT HAVE a FAITH IN CHRIST uh, HAVE THAT, YOU'VE GOT THAT FAITH. IT'S ENOUGH IF IT'S BY ITSELF. BUT IF YOU HAVE UNBELIEF THAT IS COUNTERBALANCING IT, THAT IS NEGATING, THAT IS DILUTING YOUR FAITH, THAT'S WHAT THE PROBLEM IS. REALLY, IT'S NOT A, it's not a FAITH PROBLEM. IT'S AN UNBELIEF PROBLEM. AND um, A LOT OF THAT UNBELIEF COMES BECAUSE WE DON'T KNOW WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. SO THAT'S THE FIRST POINT THAT HE'S MAKING IN THIS PARABLE. HE SAYS THAT, YOU KNOW, THEY SAID INCREASE OUR FAITH. AND HE SAID, LOOK, GUYS, JUST USE WHAT YOU'VE GOT. IF YOUR FAITH IS LIKE A MUSTARD SEED, THAT'S ENOUGH TO SEE A TREE UPROOTED AND PLANTED IN THE SEA IF YOU DON'T DOUBT IN YOUR HEART. AND THEN IN VERSE 7, HE GOES INTO A SECOND THING. HE SAYS, BUT WHICH OF YOU, HAVING A SERVANT, PLOWING OR FEEDING CATTLE, WILL SAY UNTO HIM, BY AND BY, WHEN HE HAS COME FROM THE FIELD, GO AND SIT DOWN TO MEAT, AND WILL NOT RATHER SAY TO HIM, MAKE READY WHEREWITH I MAY SUP AND GIRD THYSELF AND SERVE ME, TILL I HAVE EATEN AND DRUNKEN, AND AFTERWARDS THOU SHALT EAT AND DRINK. DOTH HE THANK THAT SERVANT BECAUSE HE DID THE THINGS THAT WERE COMMANDED HIM? I THROW NOT, WHICH THIS IS THE KING JAMES VERSION. THAT'S JUST OLD ENGLISH FOR SAYING, I DON'T THINK SO. THAT'S NOT THE WAY THAT THINGS WORK. AND IN t VERSE 10, HE SAYS, SO LIKEWISE YE, WHEN YE SHALL HAVE DONE ALL THESE THINGS WHICH ARE COMMANDED YOU, SAY, WE ARE UNPROFITABLE SERVANTS. WE HAVE DONE THAT WHICH WAS OUR DUTY TO DO. SO I BELIEVE THAT THE SECOND POINT HE'S MAKING IN THIS PARABLE IS JUST SAYING, LOOK, YOU'RE LOOKING AT FAITH AS IF IT'S SOMETHING THAT'S uh, EXTRA, SOMETHING THAT'S EXTRAORDINARY. FAITH IS A SERVANT. YOU OUGHT TO BE USING WHAT YOU HAVE, AND YOU NEED TO JUST LIVE BY FAITH. IN THE SAME WAY THAT A PERSON THAT HAS A SERVANT, WHEN THAT SERVANT WORKS ALL DAY, YOU DON'T JUST HAVE THE SERVANT COME IN AND, and you, YOU TAKE CARE OF HIM. NO, THAT SERVANT IS THERE TO SERVE YOU. NOW, YOU MAY DISAGREE WITH THAT, BUT THAT'S THE WAY THAT IT WAS IN THE DAY THAT JESUS WAS TALKING IN THIS PARABLE. THIS IS THE POINT THAT'S BEING MADE IS THAT PEOPLE THAT WORK FOR YOU, YOU DON'T, YOU, you PAY THEM uh, IN OUR DAY AND AGE. IN THIS DAY, THIS WAS TALKING ABOUT LIKE A SLAVE OR A SERVANT, AND THAT SERVANT, YOU EXPECTED THEM TO WORK FOR YOU. IT WAS THEIR DUTY. YOU EXPECT THEM TO DO THEIR DUTY. YOU DON'T SIT THERE AND FEEL BAD FOR A PERSON BECAUSE THEY'VE BEEN OUT AND THEY WORKED ALL DAY IN THE HEAT AND GOT SWEATY AND COME IN, AND NOW YOU EXPECT THEM TO LAY DOWN AND YOU'RE GOING TO TAKE CARE OF THEM. NO, IT'S THEIR JOB TO TAKE CARE OF YOU. I BELIEVE WHAT HE'S SAYING IS THAT FAITH IS LIKE A SERVANT. WE JUST AREN'T USING IT. WE FEEL LIKE IT'S EXTRAORDINARY FOR US TO BELIEVE FOR THINGS. FAITH SHOULD BE THE NORMAL CHRISTIAN LIFE. YOU KNOW, IT SAYS IN 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 5 AND VERSE 7, IN THE FIRST FEW VERSES OF CHAPTER 5, PAUL IS TALKING ABOUT THAT IF THIS EARTHLY TABERNACLE WAS DISSOLVED, AND HE'S USING, uh, YOU KNOW, LIKE a, a TABERNACLE OR A TENT TO DESCRIBE OUR BODY AND SAYING THAT OUR BODY IS LIKE A DWELLING PLACE THAT THE REAL US, THE SPIRIT MAN, LIVES IN. AND HE SAID IF THIS EARTHLY TABERNACLE OR IF THIS BODY WAS TO BE DISSOLVED, IF IT WAS TO DIE, WE HAVE A BUILDING FROM GOD. IN OTHER WORDS, HE'S SAYING THAT I AM CONFIDENT 
THAT WHEN HE PASSED ON, THAT HE WASN'T GOING TO JUST CEASE TO EXIST, BUT THAT HE HAD A GLORIFIED BODY THAT HAD BEEN PREPARED FOR HIM, AND HE WAS TALKING ABOUT THAT. SO DOWN IN VERSE 7, 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 7, HE SAYS, FOR WE WALK BY FAITH AND NOT BY SIGHT. THE SCRIPTURE ALSO SAYS THAT THE JUST SHALL LIVE BY FAITH. THEY DON'T VISIT THERE. THEY DON'T VACATION THERE. THEY DON'T SPEND THE WEEKEND IN FAITH. THIS IS WHERE THEY LIVE. IT'S WHERE THEY DWELL. SAD TO SAY, MOST CHRISTIANS LIVE A LIFE, AND I'M NOT SAYING THIS TO CONDEMN ANYBODY, BUT TO OPEN OUR EYES SO THAT WE COULD RECOGNIZE WHAT WE'RE DOING IS ABNORMAL, AND WE NEED TO START LIVING THE NORMAL CHRISTIAN LIFE. BUT THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN ACTUALLY LIVES IN UNBELIEF. THEY WALK BY SIGHT. THEY ARE USING NOTHING BUT THEIR SENSES. THEY AREN'T WALKING BY FAITH. AND THEN ON THE WEEKEND, THEY GO TO CHURCH AND THEY TRY AND SPEND AN HOUR uh, FOCUSING UPON GOD. OR IF YOU'RE REALLY SPIRITUAL, YOU'LL SPEND SOMETHING LIKE A DEVOTION AND YOU'LL HAVE A DEVOTION EACH DAY WHERE YOU SPEND 20 MINUTES, 30 MINUTES, OR WHATEVER, FOCUSED ON THE LORD. EVEN THOUGH THAT'S BETTER THAN NOTHING, I'M NOT SAYING THAT THOSE THINGS ARE TOTALLY WRONG, WE ARE SUPPOSED TO WALK BY FAITH 24 HOURS A DAY. IT IS SUPPOSED TO BE CONSTANT. IT'S NOT JUST SOMETHING WE USE ON WEEKENDS OR A DEVOTION. AND I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS THE POINT THAT HE'S MAKING, THE FIRST POINT THAT HE MAKES, TWO POINTS OUT OF THIS PARABLE. THE FIRST ONE IS YOU JUST AREN'T USING WHAT YOU'VE GOT. A TINY AMOUNT OF FAITH IS MORE THAN ENOUGH TO SEE SUPERNATURAL RESULTS. SO USE WHAT YOU'VE GOT. AND THEN THE SECOND POINT HE WAS MAKING IS THAT YOU NEED TO RECOGNIZE THAT THIS IS THE NORMAL CHRISTIAN LIFE. YOU, you NEED TO LIVE IN FAITH. AND WHEN YOU START LIVING BY FAITH, MAN, I DON'T KNOW EXACTLY HOW TO SAY THIS, BUT IF YOU, if you START LIVING WHERE THIS, EVERYTHING ABOUT YOU IS BY FAITH, YOU DON'T HAVE YOUR LIFE DEPARTMENTALIZED INTO YOUR SECULAR JOB PART, AND THEN HERE IS YOUR WEEKEND PART AND YOUR, your uh, ENTERTAINMENT PART, AND here, HERE'S THIS OTHER THING, AND YOU'VE GOT YOUR LIFE DEPARTMENTALIZED. BUT IF YOU GET TO WHERE JESUS IS INVITED INTO EVERYTHING AND YOU DO EVERYTHING BY FAITH, IF YOU'RE WORKING A JOB, YOU DO IT BY FAITH. YOU GO IN BELIEVING GOD THAT GOD IS GOING TO HELP YOU. GOD IS GOING TO GIVE YOU SUPERNATURAL IDEAS. IF YOU GET TO WHERE YOU LIVE BY FAITH AND, and YOU RECOGNIZE THAT THIS IS JUST THE NORMAL CHRISTIAN LIFE AND THIS IS THE WAY YOU LIVE, IT CHANGES EVERYTHING. WHEN YOU LIVE BY FAITH, INSTEAD OF JUST VISIT THERE, VACATION THERE. YOU KNOW, I GOT TURNED ON TO THE LORD IN 1968 WHEN I HAD AN ENCOUNTER. I WAS BORN AGAIN 10 YEARS BEFORE THAT, BUT 1968 IS WHEN I REALLY COMMITTED MY LIFE TO THE LORD, AND I STARTED SEEKING GOD. A LOT OF THINGS HAPPENED. I GOT DRAFTED, SENT TO VIETNAM. 13 MONTHS IN VIETNAM, I JUST SAT AND READ THE WORD DAY AND NIGHT. I MEAN, UP TO 10, 15 HOURS A DAY, I WOULD JUST SIT AND STUDY THE WORD, AND GOD BEGAN TO START SHOWING ME THINGS. SOME OF THE THINGS I SAID AT THE BEGINNING OF THE PROGRAM, THAT THERE ARE LAWS THAT GOVERN FAITH. ONE OF THOSE LAWS IS THAT IT'S BASED ON KNOWLEDGE, AND THIS WORD OF GOD IS WHAT GIVES US THAT KNOWLEDGE. I BEGIN TO START UNDERSTANDING SOME THINGS. I BEGIN TO START BELIEVING. Uh, I GOT MARRIED IN 1972. JAMIE AND I PASTORED A LITTLE CHURCH IN SIGAVILLE, TEXAS, AND THEN WE WENT TO CHILDRESS, TEXAS. AND IN CHILDRESS, TEXAS IS WHERE I GOT THIS REVELATION OF THE FAITH OF GOD. THIS WAS IN 1976, AND I GOT THIS REVELATION. AND I STARTED BELIEVING, AND WE SAW BLIND EYES OPEN. WE SAW PEOPLE THAT WERE BROUGHT IN IN WHEELCHAIRS AND ON, stre uh, on uh, STRETCHERS FROM AMBULANCES. WE HAD THEM BROUGHT INTO OUR CHURCH MEETINGS, AND I STARTED PRAYING, AND WE STARTED SEEING MIRACLE AFTER MIRACLE AFTER MIRACLE HAPPEN. AND I REMEMBER IT WAS IN CHILDRESS, TEXAS, IN 1976 THAT I FINALLY REALIZED FOR THE FIRST TIME THAT I WAS LIVING BY FAITH. I WAS WALKING BY FAITH. IT WASN'T SOMETHING I DID ON OCCASION, BUT IT WAS THE WAY THAT I WAS LIVING. IT WAS MY WHOLE LIFESTYLE. EVERYTHING ABOUT ME, I WAS KEEPING MY MIND STAYED UPON GOD, AND I WAS TRUSTING GOD IN EVERY AREA. NOW, I'M NOT SAYING THAT I WAS DOING IT PERFECTLY, BUT I'M SAYING I REALIZED THAT I WAS LIVING BY FAITH. AGAIN, I DON'T KNOW IF THIS COMMUNICATES TO EVERYBODY, AND IF YOU HAVEN'T EVER EXPERIENCED THAT, THEN THIS MAY SEEM LIKE IT'S SO FAR OUT, 
in the future that uh, you just can't obtain that. But it is obtainable to where you walk by faith. That's what the Apostle Paul said, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. I was actually to a place to where what I believed was more important to me than what I saw and what I felt and what I heard other people say. And I, I remember the day that I... It's like I stepped over a threshold, and I remember that thinking, I am actually living by faith. I'm not living by just sight anymore. Man, that's awesome. This is what Jesus is talking about. He's, when they asked him, Lord, increase our faith, he says, you don't need more faith. Use what you've got and recognize that this is not something you do occasionally. It's not something you do on weekends. It's not something you do just during a devotion. You have to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And I tell you, if you can get this revelation and begin to understand these things that we're talking about, it'll transform your life. This is not just for preachers. This is not just for the pastor. This whole concept of clergy, uh, they're the ones who live by faith. They're the ones that have a relationship with God, but I'm over here and I have to just go and let them be the one who prays for me. That whole concept is incorrect. Every one of us needs to start walking by faith. And that's what we're talking about. And what I'm going to be sharing with you in this little teaching, this brand new booklet that I've got, is that you do have faith already. You don't have to get more. You don't have to have God increase it. It doesn't have to grow. You don't need to do anything except learn what you've got and learn the laws that govern faith. Once you do that, I guarantee you it's just a matter of time. Once you begin to understand these things until you start seeing faith working for you like a servant, and it will produce miraculous results. So this is a little booklet that I wrote just last week, and it's only about 20 pages. This is a brief summary of it. We're also going to offer CDs and DVDs that go along with this, and this will be taken from my television program. So if what I'm saying here ministers to you, and you say, man, I'd like to get more of that, you can go and get that. Then we've also got a package deal where we're offering this book entitled, You've Already Got It. It's the same concept, but it's not limited to just talking about you've already got the faith of God. It's talking about you've already got healing, you've already got deliverance, you've already got prosperity, you've already got everything that you're praying and asking for. So this is a broad application of this, and we also have that not only in a book form, but also in CDs and DVDs. If you'll listen, our announcer will give you that information, and please call or write today.